Hello, everyone. Welcome to a very special edition of Grow Weed at Home with me, your host, Kyle Cushman. We're coming to you live from the heart of Barcelona, wrapping up an unforgettable journey at the spectacular International Cannabis Awards. It's been an incredible ride, filled with insights, inspiration, and of course, the undeniable spirit of our cannabis community. Today marks the grand finale of our Barcelona series, and believe me, we've saved the best for last. We've been honored to explore the depths of cannabis culture right here in one of the most vibrant cities in the world, surrounded by pioneers and passionate advocates of the industry. In this episode, we're bringing you exclusive interviews with three mystery guests whose contributions to cannabis are both profound and transformative. Each has a unique story to share, insights that have the power to inspire, and visions that might just shape the future of cannabis. Join us as we dive into conversations that illuminate the landscape of cannabis today, celebrating achievements, acknowledging challenges, and envisioning what lies ahead in this ever-evolving journey. So whether you're a seasoned grower, a curious newcomer, or somewhere in between, there's something in this episode for you. Let's cap off this incredible series with a bang, appreciating the beauty, the struggle, and the triumph of cannabis culture together. Thank you for tuning in, for growing with us, and for being a part of this extraordinary adventure. This is Kyle Cushman signing off from Barcelona. Let the final episode begin. First up on our special episode, filmed live from the International Cannabis Awards in Barcelona, I have the pleasure of sitting down with Luna Stauer. Luna is a titan in the world of cannabis advocacy and education. Her journey through the cannabis landscape has been fueled by a passion for plant medicine and policy reform. With a career spanning over a decade, Luna has been a pivotal voice for change, working tirelessly to bridge the gap between cannabis culture and legislative progress. Her insights into the future of cannabis, both as a culture and as an industry, are not just enlightening, they are revolutionary. Join me as we delve into the world of cannabis through Luna's eyes. Well, here we are again. We have another guest. We're still here in Barcelona. Boo hoo. And we have another guest. This is Luna Stauer. She's the Chief Impact Officer for iSpire. And you're going to have to tell me, tell our viewers exactly what that is. So, the Chief Impact Officer is responsible for making sure that our ethics and our vision align with our actions. So whether it's diversity, equity, and inclusion, and corporate responsibility, or education and engaging in the community, that's really our focus is making sure that the cannabis industry as it evolves, since we are a cannabis vaporizer technology company, mm -hmm. that we stay true to the roots of the industry and really make sure that everyone's rising with the tide. Do, do you enjoy that? I absolutely love it. I get to travel the world and meet new people and that help is. share our experiences of legalization yeah. in California worldwide. Well, Luna and I have recently just met, and uh, we've become fast friends. And um, we're both ambassadors for the ICAs, yes. the International Cannabis Awards. Proud to be a judge for the inaugural event. Which is amazing, the first ever global cannabis event. Yes. Um, and uh, so how does it feel to be here? This venue is beautiful, it's so nice. We just got unfortunate news a few minutes ago that uh, seven different clubs in Barcelona were raided. Get out. Yeah, some of our favorite clubs that had, uh, in the past few months, there have been several raids, but it's been to more of the outskirts. They coordinated a sting of seven different clubs in seven different regions of the city, Shit. including um, Turpy and HQ. And um, so it's, it's ironic that we're, that we're having a refined, sophisticated event while the locals still don't have access to safe medicine. So spark one up because we are still in a very real crisis. This is a deep flower. Yeah, it's hemp. Don't, 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 don't panic, it's organic. I'm winking. Yeah, I mean, this is, this is a human rights issue. This is a medical rights and medical sovereignty issue and it's really important that we do this work. So thank you. You know, uh, shit, I don't even know where to go with that. I'm angry now, but... Uh, we should be. You know... It's I, oppression. Look, I, uh, you know, Kelly brought this up. Kelly from Dragonfly, she was my guest before this, and she mentioned, you know... Dragonfly Earth Medicine. She gave me props, you know, because, like, I was here, here. you know, when it was all illegal, and I was putting my name and face out on things, and people are still going down, you know? And shit, who knows to go to frickin'... Spanish prison. prison. No, thank you. You know? And then we've got Nicotine over there with his wife in an Argentine. Yep, Argentine yeah, Chile. Free Chile. Betty. Chile. Free Betty. <laughs> so. For a plant. So, you know, I just got to say, uh, for all of those of you that are watching, don't take for granted if you happen to be someplace 
where you're sparking up in your home and you're not worried about it anymore. Believe me, if you're not, I can completely relate because I lived like that for many, many oh, years. Oh yeah. I rented an apartment once so that I could grow in, a, in my bedroom. And after I started to grow, found out that there was a cop living across the hall. Ooh, close call. So I, I sweated that one out. Yeah. Worth it. Que vale la pena. But, uh, so, um, so we're both ambassadors for the ICAs. That's really freaking cool. Mm -hmm. And um, we're both here gallivanting around the town. We were going to all the wonderful uh, clubs. Yes, it's so cool to see how they branded themselves, how they create these intentional spaces. Did they hit Choco? Did they? No. So, oh, they didn't? No. So I get to do my work tomorrow. Okay, thankful for small favors. Cedric runs a very tight ship and is very long game focused and represents um, someone who's been out here for 11 years who has still been very lucky, knock on wood, to not have had any issues because he's a smart business person and keeps his keeps his things right and tight. He's very inspiring. A lot of these retailers are up against the unimaginable and it is really inspiring to see how brave they are to continue providing medicine to the people despite the very real legal repercussions. Yeah, that's why we do this work. That's why we're out moving around the world we're looking for decriminalization and pushing through measures that are gonna support they call us, smart they, regulation. They call us influencers, but we're really a lot more than that. We're ambassadors. Ambassadors, tastemakers, trendsetters, leaders, models, gatekeepers, whistleblowers, truth tellers, medicine keepers, and healers. And in a lot of cases, more early on in our careers, we don't do this for the money. Oh. We don't do it for the prestige. We do it because it was a calling. Yes, and it called, I always say, I didn't choose the game, she chose me. Like. If this plant selects you to steward her in a good way, it is your duty to do that. You're a conduit of that. Like this is our time to bring plant medicine and ancient wisdom back to the forefront. It's like remembering what we've forgotten. It's not new, cannabis is not new. It's only been illegal since 37. We all gotta get some roots. We all gotta grow some roots. We already have them. We're just not aware of but them. We, we, but we're so killing people, our own So many people have cut our ties yes. to earth. Now all of our ancestors, all of our grandparents, all, all you know, if, if if we didn't all have an ancestor that was a farmer, we wouldn't be here. Right. We were all farmers. Yep. Genetics. Well, that's why they always say, you know, they, they thought they buried us, but we were seeds and we continued to grow. Like, that's what we are. Maybe, maybe we don't find our roots. We just make our own new roots. And that's why we're out here. Like, cannabis can grow in every latitude on the planet. Why not here? Why not everywhere? Big pharma is really powerful. And I'm a big fan of pharmaceutical Western medicine for emergency medicine and certain things Absolutely. that are really important. It Antibiotics, works. surgery, got, I'm all about it. it. Birth works. control, uh, safe abortions, all of these things, super, super important. But plant medicine is for chronic, it's for spiritual, it's for groundedness, it's for mental and physical well-being and balance. Pharmaceuticals do not do that. Very so it's about both. And I'm well, really grateful to, to, to be in a space with you I remember getting a seed pack with your face on it from Emerald's Cup. It was one of the gift, gifts in the judges' packets. And we've grown some of your genetics and we really are just so grateful that you've been such a, um, a solid pioneer that has stayed true to yourself and stayed very honest. What was I gonna do, make pizzas all my life? You could have done a lot of things. I could have done a lot of things. You could have sold out. You could have, um, you know, become jaded or abusive or problematic. Jaded. Not abusive. Well, you're I'm because you're a realist and pragmatic, and, and and we need people like that to be to not just be rosy-eyed and bushy-tailed. Like, no, this was a mistake the way it was rolled out most in most ways. Let's be smarter this time. Well, you know, look. So there's a positive side. There's a lot of positives. So what, what, what are you looking forward to in the coming years? Oh, I'm looking forward to the world catching up to what we've all already known and just sitting back and being like, I told you so. Medicine, well-being, education, like cannabis makes music, food, intimacy, everything better. Like the world that gets means, a hold of it. That means that not only is there all this commercial, there's going to be selling it in gas stations and stuff like that. People are going to be smoking crap and fucking weed. Unless they're growing it themselves and people can grow, grow their own your tomatoes. Own, grow your own. I do. That's what the show is all about. Grow your own. Grow weed at home. Yep, or go to your friend's house and help them with their garden and you just have a collective garden that everyone has a few days a week they go help Absolutely. out. You know, you don't have to grow it in your closet or in your backyard. Not everyone has that privilege, but you can still make sure that you're supporting small farmers and being part of collective. That's how we're going to survive. Way to go. Well, I don't have anything better to say than that. So free the plant, free Betty. 
and stop raiding our friends in Barcelona. What they are doing is a, is a, is a public service. It is not a crime. Cannabis is not a crime. It's normal to smoke pot. Well, again, uh, it's all tied to the money, the, the, the jealousy over the money, the, what they think it's before. It's religious extremism. Yes. I really freaking hate it. Well, there's greed capitalism, which is a religion. Like, absolutely. It's actually the same well, thing. It's, it's American, power hungry. That's the American culture. It is, and that's why we're out here in Europe, because we, right. we, we feel that, that their lifestyle is more important than their pocketbook. Well, we're going to keep preaching, you and I, and we're going to go, we're going to enjoy the party. Thanks for being on my show. Thanks, everyone. We're going to do this again. And I called, called, sounded as in here. Hey, we're done. <laughs> Joining us now is none other than James Loud, a name synonymous with excellence in cannabis genetics and cultivation. James has spent years perfecting the art of growing, breeding, and selecting the finest cannabis strains, contributing significantly to the quality and diversity available in the market today. His expertise and passion for the plant have not only garnered him recognition globally, but have also made him a sought-after consultant in the cannabis industry. As we sit down here at the International Cannabis Awards in Barcelona, let's get ready to unpack James's journey uncovering the secrets behind developing award-winning strains and blazing a trail for future generations of growers and consumers. All right, we're back again, and what do you know, I got another winner with, with me here. We're post-award show at the International Cannabis Awards, and I've got one and, the one and only James Loud. Dude. It's good to meet you in person, my friend. For sure. And James here, man, you are really diversified. You know, you're author, you're a, a seedsman, and, and, and what you won for here, best pod, second prize. No, 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 it was first. They won it, it was first. Oh, well, thanks for, yeah. You won best podcast of the year. You know what, I'm coming for you next year, motherfucker. Let's, let's do it, it's all right. <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. I, I think it's all healthy competition, man. I love your show, I love what you're doing. Thank you. you know, I think oral history of cannabis is so important. We got to document it now. I mean, a lot of these revolutionaries are passing away and we need to get their stories before they're gone. You know, I mean, time is so, so it goes so fast and life is so short. I'm just blessed to be a part of this industry. Uh, you know, I, I just wake up every morning and smile when I look in the mirror that I get to be part of this thing that's so much bigger than myself. I think we're very much, I think we have a lot in, I, I know we probably have a lot in common. Yeah. Um, uh, so. This podcast that you won for, yeah. Um, what do you call it? It's, it's the James Loud podcast. Right? It's the James Loud podcast. Right. Yeah. And 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 what's the focus for you? For me, the focus is diversity within the cannabis industry. So I'm not just going for breeders. I got Mila on there. We've done Ed. We get some of the OGs. Richard Delisi, who did 37 years in prison, 32 calendar years straight. We got Luke Scarmazzo that was on. You know, you name it. We're trying to get them on. People with great stories because I want to record that. And it's just. I have a really great team, you know, so they make me look really good. At the, at the same time, this stuff is, to me, is so important. I don't know how much time I have left, but, uh, you know, it's like to be part of something where you're making history, that, that to me is special. You know, uh, so what led you to, uh, you know, the podcast is more recent than, than some of your other endeavors. Yeah, so my podcast, we've done 50 episodes. We started la almost a year ago. And before that, I was on the Future Cannabis Project. Peter from Future Cannabis Project, during COVID, convinced me to do a podcast. We call it the James Loud Show. I believe we did 42 episodes of that, and that was all Zoom style. Uh, I watched and listened to Joe Rogan, so I'm a big Joe Rogan fan. So I'm like, okay, let's do it. I really wanted my, from day one, I wanted my own studio. Uh, we were building out the facility that I'm in now, 12,000 square feet. And we decided to put a podcast studio in. And so that's part of our boardroom and everything else. And, you know, it's part of my daily, I, I work, that's my office is the studio. So it's, it's great. Well, I only hope that the work that I'm doing, I can build, build up as much cloud as you have, you know, in the broadcasting arena. You know, I, I may have a lot of cloud in the general, you know, the cannabis culture. Oh, community. in the high times world and other uh, stuff? Yes, yeah. you know, you know, high times was an amazing, it was kind of like a uh, finishing school, but it, yeah, I didn't know how to write when I got there. Well, I grew up look, grew looking up to you. So. Well, as you say, the editors make you look really good. Yeah. And uh, I, I definitely put the effort in and I definitely put the work in. Right. But, uh, you know, they may have had the vocabulary. Right. But I, I there was no polish, yeah. you know, and... Uh, 
but you know, five years as a staff journalist, yeah, you, you learn a few things. For sure. And uh, I've had a couple of shows too. This isn't my first show. Yeah. Um, and I really enjoy it. I enjoy, like you said, I, I love chronicling anything to do with cannabis culture. Yeah, and you there's know? so much to record. What yeah. people don't understand is there is so much to get down and there is so much history and, and it's history in the making. A lot of it is just like, I, I really, one of my next things, we're doing some documentaries on cat piss and I'm doing one with Steve D'Angelo, Ed Rosenthal, Richard DeLisi, uh, Luke Scarmazzo, and that is, you know, that, that's going to be a really good documentary. But I, I love the documentary side of it too, but it's, it's all just amazing, and there's so many good stories. That is really worthy stuff, you know? Yeah. And uh, right now I'm just having fun making sure that I uh, uh, teach more people how to grow. Yeah. You know, so I'm focusing on that. Um, but yeah, it seems like you're having a good time. My breeding book, you gotta get my, I, I got a copy for you. Good. But breeding is something that everybody should do. Yes. I don't think, I think that you need to learn how to grow first. I think Absolutely. that is so important to be able to make the plant express. Absolutely. But that, you know, that's what my book's all about. 380 pages on breeding and it goes into detail on everything. So beginner to advanced, a lot of I fun mean, stuff. Everybody who grows weed has to do the full cycle at least once. Yeah. You gotta do the males and do the culling. And you know you don't necessarily have to breed, right? Although that's a really good exercise as well. It's a lot you know, of fun. It's uh, just making something that's never existed before. That's all your own. Pop. I mean, I just recently popped a thousand seeds last week that I made, and I get I get a lot of enjoyment from germinating seeds that I made. I love germinating other people's seeds too, but when I made them, there's like that element of surprise because you don't always know what you're going to get when you're breeding towards certain lines. You kind of know what to expect, but then there's always you know, there's these these standouts, these unicorn. The nature. Oh yeah, stuff that you had no idea. There was right. no intention of getting that result, and then all of a sudden, there it is. And sometimes it's really special. And it's never ended. Yeah. There's always another another bean to pop. There's always another bean to pop. You know, it's like a lot of fun. Well, that's really cool. Thanks for stopping by. Yeah. Congratulations on your award. I know that we'll both be here next year. Yeah. Good luck, because I'm taking it next year. Good luck. It's on. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, coach. Thank you. Our next and final guest is Kelly, one of the brilliant minds behind Dragonfly Earth Medicine, a name that has become a byword for sustainability and ethical cultivation practices in the cannabis world. Kelly and the Dragonfly Earth Medicine ethos represents a profound respect for the earth and a commitment to organic, regenerative cannabis farming. Their work transcends mere cultivation. It is about creating a symbiotic relationship between the grower, the plant, and the planet. As we gather here at the heart of Barcelona for the International Cannabis Awards, Kelly is here to share insights into the power of holistic earth-centered cultivation practices and how they can revolutionize the future of cannabis. Hello everybody. Of course, we're still here in Barcelona, but I have another guest and it happens to be Dragonfly Earth Medicine, the other half. This is my friend, Kelly. Hi everybody. Hi. 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 Thanks for sitting down with me. It feels so great to sit down with you and be with you in person here in Spain. I know. We had fun on the show. We did a nice episode of Grow Weed at Home a couple, about a month ago or yeah. something like that. And that was fun. But this is totally different, yeah. person to person. Yeah. So tell me how all this feels. I mean, well, you and I just immediately, before we went live here, immediately started going deep, immediately started connecting with honesty. And I feel like whenever I'm together with people from the cannabis industry or the plant medicine, people of the world, it's just cuts the bullshit. Yeah. You know, yeah. and it cuts like, oh, we all know that we've had difficulties and highs and lows in our year. We're like here, we're now, we're connecting. And I really love the idea that we can connect deeper than just an everyday conversation. And that happens continuously in the cannabis industry. And in this place, wow. You know, look, I don't want to diss the USA, but this is different. It is. And you know, it's deeper. It is. It is, right? It is. You know, there's just, there's just uh, less of an air of commercialism. And, and with, without the commercialism, excuse me, dear, we're doing a show. <laughs> Thank you, Phyllis. She looks great. <laughs> Thanks, Phyllis. <laughs> I hadn't tried to make she fun. She looks great. <laughs> so, um, you know, yeah, it, it, look, um, 
there's plenty of wonderful people in the business and out of business in the USA. You know, I often say every important person I've ever met in my life, I probably met through in, in cannabis somewhere. Right. I and mean, my life kind of began, I've been growing weed since I was 21, right. you know? And uh, so here it just seems like, uh, I don't know, there's less preservatives in the food and there's less preservatives in the conversation. Nice. I believe that. You know? I definitely believe that. Like, it's not like a fake it kind of place. There's nobody's putting on air. No, no air. As they say, right? No. Who says that anymore, even? Really? I don't know. You I don't know. Did. But it came off, right? Yeah, it did. <laughs> it worked. So, Josh got to tell me all about what was going on on the farm. Yeah. You know, and, and that the kids are helping out, looking after everything. There That's you all go. fabulous. There you go. And, you know, a farmer's work is never done. So, you know, and, and spring is right around the corner. Yeah. But, um, but I also know that you're involved with a little extracurricular, um, how would we say, you know, a, a personal healing kind I of uh, investment. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about that. Is there actually a company? That you that you have, that you or is it just a personal hobby? Well, I am a registered midwife, okay. and I'm also a natural doctor, mm -hmm. and I've been doing that since I was 26 years old. And doing, and cannabis has always intertwined like a braid, and plant medicine and herbalism have always gone together, including even like what we put into our gardens, what we put into our kitchens. And Josh and I have helped start and open up clinics all over the world for women and children. What did you call it? In disaster relief areas. It's Mother Health International. Okay. As well as we've, we've helped out lots of different organizations. But I believe that it's what you said was extracurricular. But for me, it's the same. When working with a plant, it's always been about medicine. It's always been about healing. It's always been about utilizing it for women to reach their highest potential. We deal with a lot of ebbs and flows every month and in childbirth and in losing children so much. And so connecting a feminine plant to feminine women and the divine feminine in that way, in a medicinal way, in a, even like a community way, because they look really open to be able to talk with women about, uh, there she is. It's you. a live show, folks. It is. <laughs> um, so it, it, it's all intertwined. Medicine, cannabis. So, you know, recreating with medicine, with cannabis is also medicine. Because yeah, absolutely. we're able to have this incredible conversation. Absolutely. It can't help me but bring the back. You know, I've walked around this area for 57 years now. And for, good, for a good 35, 36, 36 years at that, I believe that cannabis was my medicine. Before anybody called it medicine, I used to jokingly, literally, I think jokingly, I can't tell people that this was my medicine. Don't harsh, don't be mad at me. At least I'm not doing cocaine or whatever. I'm, you know, this is my medicine. This makes me feel proper and make you feel right. And I'd always said and always believed. I don't remember the first person. I might have read it in Jack Harrow's book or something, or maybe uh, Steve Gaskin or somebody. All cannabis use is medicinal. Absolutely. But I don't believe that I anymore. Do. But I don't. Really? Yeah, you see, isn't this terrible? You know why? Why? Well, there's bad cannabis out there. That's why, because well, that's, the majority that's of cannabis different. that's being bought in dispensaries in that's California different. that is being overtaxed and overpriced, and people are paying hard-earned money, money yeah. they can't afford. You know, it's almost like you hear about people, you know, choosing whether they can buy their prescription drugs. That's how it is with, that's how I see it with cannabis. Yeah. And how healing is that? It's not healing. Okay, so that's all I meant. So that's we can all I meant. say that cannabis is healing, but we need to define what healing cannabis is. Sure. Because that's the most important part of this. If it's not healing, we can say water is good for you to drink. So if it's toxic if you're simply and it has giving, tons of shit in it, it's not good water. If you're simply giving up 20% of your salary to acquire it, is that healing? Is that healing? No. Okay, so, so yes. Uh, 
cannabis use is medicinal in, for all people in a sense of whether you actually ascribe to it or not whether you're a super spiritual person or not, whether you're in tune with your chakra or not. That's right. And you use cannabis in any responsible manner, it's going to be medicine. So it brings it back to the root that, that we have to bring cannabis back to the sacred. And this isn't a cliche hippie or even something that needs to be put into a spiritual term. This is that we are curators for this plant that does not have a voice. We have to give this plant a voice. We have to show up for her. I do, don't I? You do. Okay. And that's what I'm saying, that's what you're doing. And everybody else out there needs to show up so that we can all elevate in a way that the medicine wants us to elevate, which is what your life is. Yeah. Everything that you have on you Everything that's been given to you has probably had cannabis attached to it or has been gifted by cannabis in some way. Of course, you work hard for it, but that's the relationship. And it also has given you this beautiful educational force and this beautiful lightness that you have about you to want to curate for the plant in a beautiful way. So I just love the relationship that you have with this plant and what you do with it. Well, thank you. I, 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 it's, I just feel lucky. I, I, it's, it sounds cliche. I feel lucky and blessed it was to have fallen into this life. You know, I mean, um, you know, I just literally smoked a joint with somebody at a head shop one day, and because it was such good, they're, they're, they, have you ever wanted? They introduced me to somebody, you know, and uh, of course, yes, I got my foot in the door, and I had to work really hard. I wasn't a writer. I became a writer so that I can keep that job, so that I can gain this soapbox. And I don't ever want to give it up because uh, I don't have to feel important. Yeah. I have to feel like I'm making somebody's lives, people's lives better. I'm making people happier or making their lives better because that's what makes me feel important. Thanks, you. That is amazing. You know, and that's and what that's, that's what this me. plant has given me. So just so you know, as long as just start growing weed, and you'll feel great about yourself. <laughs> but I also want to bring back. You just said that you're lucky, and I just want to remind you that when you have been bringing this plant forward, and you're always educating about it, you did it in time where you could have been in jail for life. You could have been pulled over and you could have had everything taken away from you at a moment's notice. That's a choice to have a relationship with a plant with those type of attachments to it. I just believed I was right. Wasn't lucky. I just believed I was right. Well, you were right, but the plant wanted you to be right also. So no. I don't think that it's luck when you continue to choose to go against uh, a gr an ingrained, brainwashed ideology there were and bring lot, it into the There light. were a lot of choices along the way. For example, when I let the staff of High Times stay at my grow house in Hunter, New York, within the view of uh, the, the skew, you know, I didn't know any of these people. But I said to myself, you know, they're not here to hurt you. But did I really know that? But it was because this was, this was the common denominator. So, thanks for sitting down with me. We could talk for an hour. I know. We'll talk some more. And if you remember when we did the show from my house, I, I said that when I was, I was going to come visit you guys. I can't wait. And I am going to come visit you guys. I can't wait. So, thank you for being here and let's go enjoy the party. Hey, thanks so much. Thank you. Have a great time. And now we're introducing a brand new segment we're calling Highlights at Home. Highlights at Home is all about breaking news articles, breaking tech, cannabis culture, and whatever you need to hear to keep you up to date in the industry. Cali Weed Delivery Drivers give a nod to 420 Strike. Over 500 weed delivery folks in Cali might strike on 420, thanks to a standoff in contract talks with Ease Technologies and their branch stacks. The main beef? They want better mileage pay, higher hourly wages, and guaranteed hours each week. 
despite Ease offering what they call a generous bump to $25 an hour plus tips and an 88% hike in base pay, workers from four UFCW locals said no thanks on March 19th. Ease's boss, Corey Azzolino, says the company is yet to see profit, but it's open to fair talks, stressing they're not hoarding cash and respect workers' rights to unionize. If talks don't advance, a strike could be on the horizon, though when and how long it'd last is up in the air. Ease claims they'll keep things running if it comes to that. Adding to the drama, the UFCW hit Ease with two labor complaints, and history shows 420 strikes can work. Last year, Green Thumb workers in Chicago nabbed a 50% wage jump after a two-week strike. Meanwhile, in Sacramento, Ease drivers just joined the Teamsters, making them the third weed delivery crew in Cali to hop on the union train, following Navis and Amuse. Seems like the union wave is catching on in the cannabis delivery world. Setback for recreational cannabis legalization in Hawaii. The buzz around legalizing cannabis for recreational use in Hawaii just hit a major roadblock. The Hawaii House Finance Committee shut down the bill, saying they had too many worries about how it would actually work and because many committee members were against it. Committee head Kyle Yamashita said they need to focus on dealing with the costs of recent wildfires and other important expenses instead, especially with the state budget being light. Basically, they feel it's crucial to put money into things like education, roads, and critical services for Hawaii's residents, rather than diving into legalizing adult-use cannabis right now. Even though the bill had made some progress by passing the second round of voting in the Senate, Yamashita pointed out that this was the farthest any recreational cannabis bill had ever gone in Hawaii. Representative Dave Tarnas, one of the bill's big supporters, credited the teamwork of various government bodies in shaping the bill thus far. Green light in Germany. Cannabis users cheer eased restrictions. This is some wild news from Germany. Cannabis enthusiasts are partying it up after the country passed new laws, making it totally cool to have your own stash. As of April Fool's Day, adults can carry up to 25 grams of dried weed and even grow three plants at home. Berlin was lit up with folks gathering at the Brandenburg Gate for what they called a smoke-in to mark the occasion and give a big thumbs up to the new rules. It got pretty heated before this with a big debate about whether it's a good idea to make weed more chill to get a hold of. The German government figures that decriminalizing the green will help cut down on sketchy underground sales and keep folks away from the dirty weed, especially looking out for the younger crowd. Health Minister Karl Lauterbach thinks bringing weed out of the shadows will actually help with addiction support, keeping the young ones away, and kick the black market to the curb. On the flip side, not everyone's on board. Some people think it's a total disaster, like Katja Seidel, a therapist from Berlin, who's worried that making access will make toking up seem way too normal, especially to the children. The law still says no go for anyone under 18, but it's got some extra rules, like no blazing up within 100 meters of school grounds or playgrounds. The cops are feeling a bit iffy about the whole thing, worry about how to regulate it all, and unsure about the tools they'll need to keep things in check. It's like a whole new world of green in Germany, and folks from all around are curious to see how this new law plays out. Sounds like it's high time for some changes in the air. Light one up for Germany. Thanks again for joining us for another episode of Growing at Home with Kyle Cushman and Highlights at Home. Thank mm-hmm. you.